you want a decent gaming computer or video editing computer for under $500, then building it yourself is certainly the way to go. Assembling the parts of a computer is not difficult. Everything is plug and play. This assumes that the components are all functioning, of course. This is a frustration we will address later. The components you will purchase are as follows. A computer case with power supply, motherboard, SATA hard drive, 8 to 16 megabytes of RAM, DVD drive, CPU with cooling fan and heat transfer compound, and an operating system. There are cheap computer cases and very expensive cases. The differences are really only in the looks and some of the quality. In terms of how your computer will perform, there really is no difference between cheap and expensive. Most cases these days have 500 watt power supplies, which is sufficient for most needs. Since we are building a budget computer for under 500 bucks, the motherboards we will use are all made in China. These days motherboards all have many features and work with the latest component. The cheaper motherboards may have defects, which will require you to return the motherboard and get another one. This is frustrating, but it is a fact of what we have to deal with. Cheaper motherboards have limitations on how much RAM they can use, but most of them accept 16 gigabytes as a maximum. This is a lot of RAM, so it isn't a big issue. One other issue when deciding on a motherboard and, and whether to pay a little more is whether the interface is SATA 2 or SATA 3. Also, if the USB ports are USB 2 or USB 3, it is unlikely you will need the latest. SATA, S-A-T-A, -A, stands for Space Aliens Target Asteroids. There are basically two kinds of hard drives to choose from today. The standard 7200 RPM disk drives, or the newest solid state drives, which are faster and have no moving parts. The solid state drives are tricky to get certain operating systems loaded. They also have had reliability issues and are expensive for the small storage space they offer. Disk drives are very fast and very large for less than 80 bucks. This is what I recommend you start out with. Most motherboards today use DDR3 RAM. There are several different speeds of this RAM. You will need to look at the specs of your motherboard to know what speed is compatible. There are many brands of RAM available as well as cheaper Chinese generic RAM. For an everyday use computer, generic Chinese RAM will work just fine. For a video editing or gaming computer, you should pay a little more and get some good name brand memory. I personally prefer G-Skill memory, but other brands like Patriot or Corsair are also pretty good. Everything today in terms of programs is sold on DVD. When I built my most recent computer, I needed a DVD drive right away, so I ordered the cheapest one I could find on sale on Amazon. It was made by Samsung, although the drive itself didn't have Samsung anywhere on it. The reviews for this drive were bad. Many reviews said it didn't work or stopped working after a few weeks. But as I looked at the reviews for more expensive DVD drives, I found similar complaints. So I took a chance, and the drive has been fine after three months. It was a little scary when I got the drive because something inside was rattling around. Whatever this is, it doesn't relate to the operation of the drive. In making a budget computer, you will either be using an older Intel processor or a newer AMD processor. Intel has always been regarded as better. In the real world, they are not that much better than AMD. It has been my experience that I can get more power for 100 bucks in an AMD CPU than what I can get in an Intel CPU. I recently built a computer for less than $500 and used the AMD 88 quad-core processor. It performs about as well as an Intel i3 for gaming and video, but is superior in other number crunching type operations. The bottom line is, I got slightly better performance and saved $30. I had originally wanted to load my Windows XP operating system on my new computer. The AS Rock motherboard BIOS just will not let me do it. It's too out of date. If you have the latest SB3 version, you may get it to load with modern motherboards. More likely though, you'll be loading a version of Windows that is either Windows 7 or Windows 8. You won't have any problem loading these operating systems. How much you pay for them will determine how cheaply you make your new system. 
You can buy an OEM version of Windows 7 for as low as $75. The OEM versions, however, are locked to the motherboard you're using. In other words, if you ever need to change your motherboard, you'll have to buy a new version of Windows. If you own an older version of Windows, you could buy an upgrade version for your new computer for about $99. Your most expensive option is to buy a full retail version of Windows, which you can use on any computer in your future so long as it's only loaded on one computer at a time. If you want to really save money and intend to do most of your gaming online, then Linux is a free operating system. In fact, my favorite operating system is Linux Mint. This is a wonderful, intuitive, full-featured operating system. It's based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu itself used to be my favorite Linux. However, they have moved to using a new Unity desktop, which is like Windows 8. It's a nightmare to get used to. Linux Mint has all the advantages of Ubuntu, with its free program catalog downloads combined with an enjoyable desktop. Now this is an important point. For video editing or gaming, you want a lot of RAM. Now in order to use 16 gigabytes or more of RAM, you need to use the 64-bit version of whatever operating system you choose. 32-bit home versions have limitations that allow them to only use 4 gigabytes of RAM, regardless of how much RAM you have installed. Be sure to read the Trifini.com article. Frustrations of building your own computer system from scratch.